fingers with unsuited limbs and appointments. There were delirious fancies such as the madman. There was much of the beautiful, much of the wanton, much of the bizarre, something of the terrible, and not a little of that which might have excited disgust. To and fro in the seven chambers, Ugh, disgusting. Look at that. Are these the dreams? Right you don't want to know what happened in the violet room. And causing the wild music of the orchestra to seem as the echo of their steps. Until at length there commenced the sounding of midnight upon the clock. And then the music ceased as I have told. And the evolutions of the waltzers were quieted. And there was an uneasy cessation of all things as before. But now there were twelve strokes to be sounded by the bell of the clock. Now it happened, perhaps, that more of thought crept with more of time into the meditations of the thoughtful among those who revel. And thus do it happen, perhaps, that before the last echoes of the last chime had utterly sunk into silence, that there were many individuals in the crowd who had found leisure to become aware of the presence of a masked figure. The rumor of the new presence, having spread itself whisperingly around, there arose at length from the whole company a buzz or murmur expressive of disapprobation. I think I know who and this is. Finally, a terror. I think I know what his mask can see. In the assembly of phantasms such as I have painted, it may well be supposed that no ordinary appearance could have created such sensation. In truth, the masquerade license of the night was nearly unlimited. But the figure in question had out Herod Herod and gone beyond the bounds of even the prince's indefinite decor. There are chords in the hearts of the most reckless which cannot be touched without emotion. Even with the utterly lost to whom life and death are equally jests, there are matters of which no jest can be made. No company indeed seem now deeply to feel that in the costume and bearing of the stranger Neither wit nor propriety existed. The figure was tall and gaunt. Uh oh. He's got the blood drops. The foot in the habiliments of the grave. The mask which concealed the visage was made so nearly to resemble the countenance of a stiffened corpse that the closest scrutiny must have had difficulty in detecting the cheat. And yet, all of this might have been endured, if not approved by the mad revelers around. But the mummer had gone so far as to assume the type of the Red Death. His vesture was dabbled in blood, and his broad brow with all the features of his face was besprinkled with a scarlet horror. When the eyes of Prince Prospero fell upon this spectral image, he Which breathed was fire. Slow and solemn movement, as if more fully to sustain its role, stalked to and fro among the waltzers. He was seen to be convulsed with a strong shudder, either of terror or distaste, whereupon his brow reddened with rage. Who dares, he demanded harshly of his courtiers who stood near him, who dares insult us with his blushing mockery? Seize him and unmask him. I'm not teasing him. They know whom we have to hang at sunrise from the battlements. But in the eastern or blue chamber, in which stood the Prince Prospero as he uttered these words, they rang throughout the seven rooms loudly and clearly. For the Prince was a bold and robust man, and the music had become hushed at the waving of his hand. At first, as he spoke, there was a slight rushing movement of pale courtiers in the direction of the intruder, who, at the moment, was also near at hand, and now, with deliberate and stately step, made closer approach to the speaker, but from a certain nameless awe with which the mad assumptions of the mummer had inspired the whole party, there were found none who 
who put forth hand to seize him. <laughs> so that, unimpeded, he passed within a yard of the No, I wouldn't person. touch that. And while the vast assembly, as if with one impulse, shrank from the centers of the rooms to the walls, he made his way uninterruptedly. But with the same solemn and measured step through the blue chamber to the purple, through the purple to the green, through the green to the orange, through this again to the white, and even thence to the violet, every decided movement had been made to arrest him. Then, however, that the Prince Prospero, maddening with rage and the shame of his own momentary cowardice, rushed hurriedly through the six chambers, while none followed him on account of a deadly terror that had seized upon all. Four lost a drawn dagger and had approached in rapid impetuosity to within three or four feet of the cheating figure. When the latter, having attained the extremity of the velvet apartment, turned suddenly and confronted his pursuer. There was a sharp cry, and the dagger dropped gleaming upon the sable carpet, upon which instantly afterwards fell prostrate in death the Prince Prospero. Then, summoning the wild courage of despair, a throng of the revelers at once threw themselves into the black apartment, and seizing the mummer, whose tall figure stood erect and motionless in the shadow of the ebony clock. Yes, to the utter horror at finding the gray cerements and the corpse-like mass which they held with so violent a rudeness, untenanted by any tangible form. And how was acknowledged the presence of the Red Death? He had come like a thief hmm? in the night. The Red Death, all right. One by one dropped the revelers in the blood-bedewed halls of their realm, and died each in the despairing posture of his fall. The light of the ebony clock went out with the last of the game, and the flames of the tripods expired, and darkness, decay, and the Red Death held illimitable dominion over all. Wow, okay, that's uh, it's quite a cutscene there, yeah, I don't... Okay, the Mask of the Red Death, people. Uh-oh, don't tell me I activated it again. Red Death is long better the country. Yeah, we don't, we don't need that. Red death had long devastated the country. No peasants had ever been so ah. fatal or so hideous. Good. Fish Island Lands, huh? Yeah.
the heck am I?